What's going on you guys? How you doing today? So today I'm actually really excited to uh, to show you guys what's been going on. So basically after I shot the last video I kind of got into a point in the solar system where it's like, okay, um, there's definitely more things that I need to teach you guys and show you and definitely more things that I can't do yet because I don't have, let's say, so many resources, I don't have enough credits and all that sort of stuff. So I didn't advance anywhere in the series per se. But what I did do behind the scenes was I did stream on Twitch and get a bunch of PC players to uh, to play with. And what we wound up doing was we wound up going to this uh, level over here over on Hyrcon, uh, on Pluto called Hyrcon. And the whole point of us going here was I was looking to get Endo. I was basically going here to get a whole bunch of Endo. This isn't the only place that you can go. This is just the place that I like to go to get Endo because on top of getting um, Endo, you're getting a lot of credits. You're getting a lot of uh, relics. You're getting, you're getting a lot of stuff, even the resources, um, you're just getting a lot from doing Hyrcon. Whereas other people would say, oh, you know, like, I like getting Endo from other places. I'm just being honest, this is where I like to do it because of all the things that, you know, get added extra. So we wound up going there and doing that. Um, just so you guys are aware, uh, as to like, you know, what I'm about to show you where a lot of this stuff came from. Now, side note, while I was on Hyrcon, one of the players I played with was a Nidus. Now, I can't actually get the mouse to scroll over it, but if you guys can see on my Excalibur's neck right there, there's a little pink pimple. Um, that's gonna grow, and that's gonna get bigger, because there's a Warframe in the game called Nidus. And Nidus is an infected Warframe, or he's, he's an infested Warframe. Um, according to the lore, which they didn't really get too into, it's possible Nidus is even the original uh, Warframe. He might even be the original affected, like the first to be affected Warframe. There's a lot of Warframes I'm really excited about in the game that exist, but we're unfortunately not going to get into those in this series. There are plenty of other videos I have on the channel where you guys can check them out and everything, but um, Nidus isn't necessarily someone that, you know, we're going to get into in this series. Now, if early on, let's say you bought Platinum, you know, and you wound up getting yourself a Nidus, um, awesome. He's, he is one of the frames that would be really solid to help you through getting through the campaign, you know, when you're starting off fresh and everything in the game. But he's, uh, his playstyle is very unique. He's definitely an amazing Warframe. He looks incredible. Um, and as you guys can tell, I don't know if I can actually scroll over it. These, like, little tentacles on his arms, on his head, on his legs and stuff like that. When you use him and you basically get him to a certain degree of, you know, stacks... It'll make sense if you play him, but when you get into like a certain degree of stacks, all this stuff actually opens up. Now, it's opened up right now. You guys are seeing the opened up version, but regular Nidus doesn't look like this. You know, when you first get him, he's going to look a little different. He's going to be very closed off, but when you get really powerful with him, um, per mission, he opens up like this, and you just see all this extra cool looking stuff. He's just, he's a really, really awesome Warframe. I can't say enough good things about Nidus, but... Nonetheless, that's just a side note. That's where the pimple on my neck came from. And as far as how to get rid of that, um, it needs about seven days to mature. And then once it's mature, you guys are going to be able to walk into this room on your ship. And I'll show you guys later on in the series because I'm not going to want to keep that there forever. But we'll walk in there and we'll get that pimple removed. And um, it's kind of disgusting. It's not really a pimple. It's kind of like a cyst or a growth or whatever. Um, next thing we're going to talk about really quick behind the scenes is uh, just so you guys can keep up with everything is that uh, when I was streaming I had a bunch of people gift me stuff that don't necessarily um, affect this series for you po from your point of view as the new player watching this. So what they wound up doing was they wound up giving me color palettes and stuff so you guys can check this out. Um, three colors palettes that we got was classic saturated, infested, and smoke colors. These are kind of the three that I requested um, but as you guys can see we have all this opened up. And we can basically make our um, our Excalibur any color that we want to. Um, and uh, how do I back out of here? So basically, you can change the look. And uh, I already have a look saved, so I'll just bump her over to that. This is what I happen to have on him. Now, the other thing that we wind up doing is you guys can see these sigils right here, which really you just go into Regilia, and it's basically this. This is what I have on here, but we did this. Um, this you get from completing a raid. This you get completing uh, for completing a Nightmare Raid. And uh, you guys can see what that looks like over there for that one right there. So you basically can choose what you want. Um, they're basically just emailed to you once you beat a raid um, for this one. And then a Nightmare Raid when you, when you, is what you're going to get for this one. Now, just keep in mind, like, what I'm saying is I'm a Mastery Rank 1 when I did this. I still wasn't able to rank up. It takes 24 hours for the next rank up, which we're going to do in this video. But for you guys to be aware of... Um, 
I, I was a master of rank one. I knew how to do the raids, but I was not prepared for them at all. Like, I don't have great mods on. I wasn't leveled. What's beautiful about the raids is that if you, if you know what you're doing, your master rank doesn't matter. And that's uh, that's the whole point of me even showing you guys this. You're gonna, you might meet a lot of players in the community that don't know any better and will tell you that your master rank matters. And if you're not of a certain master rank, then you can't play with them or you can't go on certain missions and stuff like that. It's all, it's, it's all complete crap. To be completely honest, because like I said, Master of Rank 1, and I completed the raid and the nightmare raid with an Excalibur, who's not even super ideal for raids. Um, he doesn't suck, like he's not bad. I'm not saying don't bring him on raids. I'm just saying, like, he is not a character I would recommend you bring on raids. Um, but uh we can get into that. I already have videos on raids and stuff you guys can check out. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just showing you guys where all this stuff came from, and that's why I look like this and so the colors, all that wonderful stuff. Basically, I was able to get a whole bunch of credits farming Hyrakam with everybody and doing the raids. That's where all this stuff came from. And these are just the leftover credits that I have from actually building up a lot of my mods. Oh yeah, and before I do that, you guys see on my chest right here, there's the sigil. Um, you guys get these sigils. Um, this I got from the Nightmare Raid for defeating Rustrag 3. This we got from the regular raid from defeating Vehek. Um, so these are both from the raids as well. And another thing I want to show you, I'm glad I'm here. These right here are sigils that I'd rather have on my Excalibur. Um, these are one credit a piece. Like, literally one credit. That's, it's basically free. And Warframe does stuff like this, where they give us stuff that you can add to your Warframes. Um, for really just magic, it's basically free. So I'm just showing you guys, as soon as you start the game, you guys can click on these, you'll have them right away, and you can add them to your Warframes. Now that you guys know that I have colors, um, I'm also going to show you guys again, or I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to do it now, but if you guys want to change the inside colors of your ship and the outside colors of your ship, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go, where is it, equipment? Here we go. Go to equipment, go to the bottom to landing craft, and you can customize your interior right here. Um, you can customize your, uh, the outside of your landing craft as well. And then as far as, like, place decorations go and stuff like that, that's when you get stuff. You guys can just, like, decorate your ship with actual, like, noggles or, like, just little... Um, icons, just you can put stuff all over your ship and it make it look really cool. You guys might have seen that on my other ship um, in the previous video when I like kind of jump back and forth. But um, yeah, that's about it for now. We're about to do our Master Rank Two test, and I'm going to show you guys what I am rocking, so you guys can see what we have on here. So for the Paris Prime, this doesn't matter because it's going to be a secondary weapon test. Master Rank Two is going to be secondary, or it's going to be melee. I'm pretty sure it's secondary though. So we're going to take a look at what I have on here. These mods are mods that I got from running just Hyrcon and the raid. Like again, that is all I did on the in between time. Um, I could take all of these off and still beat the Master Rank Two test, and so can you. So I'm leaving these on here just for like life being a little quicker and I can just show you guys what the what the Master Rank 2 test looks like. But at the end of the day, it's not, you know, make or break. You don't absolutely like have to have these things on here. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, but basically that's what's going on. We got a bunch of mods like this Hornet Strike. Oh yeah, great. Now that uh, now that you guys can see the difference, this you see how it has a crack in it. This mod has a crack and it says damaged on it down here. That means it's crap. We can get rid of this. Because now we have its original, which is not damaged. And you guys can see the difference. This, at the very bottom of this mod, it has three little dots. That's how many times you can rank it up. Like, get what, what level can that mod become? This has ten. So this is, not only is it not damaged, it can get up to a rank ten. So let's just look at this. The This damage mod starts at a damage of ten, whereas this unranked, you know, not damaged mod starts at a rank of twenty. And every time you level it up, it increases, you know, so you can imagine how much stronger this is actually going to wind up being. This one right here, the Hornet Strike, I only ranked it up to rank 4, and it's already another 100% damage. By the time I'm done with this, it'll be over 200. Fantastic mod. Definitely, definitely worth having. Um, probably one of the most important mods for your secondaries. Just like Serration would be this thing's equivalent for your primaries. And Pressure Point, which isn't a silver mod, it's actually a bronze, is the equivalent for your melee of Hornet Strike and serration for your uh, for your primaries. So, all that being said, let's uh, let's get into our master rank test. Go check out what's uh, let's go check out what's happening on our master rank test. So you guys, if you read this really quick, this is what it says: trading access um, plus one loadout slot. You get a um, thousand daily standing limit. Um, 50 void trace storage, which is, this is cool. This is important. 
sort of, I think this is going to become more important in the future because currently where the game is at, um, whether you make a radiant relic, uh, a relic radianted, um, I mean, whether you, if you make the relic better, whatever, put fissures into it, it doesn't seem to do anything. To be completely honest, um, for as long as I've grinded this game out, and I, I don't even use that word loosely, like as long as I've played this game, it, these things, I, on my life, they don't do a goddamn thing. Like, they're totally useless. Um, but I do use them anyway because mentally, it just makes me feel better. Knowing that, um, when I look back at if I tried to get a rare part out of a relic, um, I didn't, or at least I did everything that I could have. I didn't completely ignore this. But we'll get into that in the future and I'll have the same tone most likely because I doubt they're going to change it by the time we get there. Um, that's going to be after we complete the Mars Junction. We'll have access to the Void Relic segment. But for now, so yeah, I would definitely be building this a little bit better. You guys remember when I was shooting them in the first test, how I had to put multiple bullets into them? But now that I have a serration of rank 4 and those other mods on there, it only takes one of these bullets and they're dead. So you guys can see how big of a difference ranking your mods up really makes you. It makes you a much stronger player. So this is definitely going to be going a lot faster because of that. But again, all you guys really have to know is that in this game, Master in Rank does not matter. It's not a bad judge of how much a person might know about the game, but at the end of the day, you don't know if it's a new account. Um, you don't know if maybe they actually have everything in the game, but they just never wanted to Master in Rank up, because you're not, you don't have to. I definitely recommend you do anyway because of all the extra stuff you get out of it, like your extra trades, your 50 extra void trace storage per, you know, mastery rank, just everything. Just everything I totally recommend. So yeah, when you guys come back um, to the next video, I'll do this behind the scenes. I'll have my ship looking a little fancy, I'll have the, the outside of the ship looking fancy and all that stuff. Um, but now that we've completed our mastery rank 2 test, um, oh, that's the last thing that I gotta, t I gotta show you guys, is that also behind the scenes while I was doing that sort of stuff, and you wanna do this too, this is what I wound up doing. I wound up going to the market, I wound up going to my weapons, and I wound up finding weapons in the market that I can buy with just credits. So, they didn't require me to have, uh, you know, like, platinum to purchase them. I was able to buy them with just credits, and honestly, that's what I'm gonna wind up doing in a second. I'm gonna wind up going back to the market, buying a whole bunch of weapon blueprints, and then I'm just going to work towards building those weapons because um, your mastery rank depends, like in order for you to grow your mastery rank, you want to complete missions that you haven't completed before, you want to level up warframes, you want to level up weapons, and you even want to level up your companions, whether it's an animal or if it's a sentinel, um, just stuff like that. And then there will be another section added down here under companions for like weapons for your sentinels. Um, that'll get added later when I get a sentinel with weapons, but for now, just know that anything that can be leveled in, leveled in this game, you want to level that to increase your XP for your mastery rank. Um, so again, behind the scenes, this is what I did. I'm on the Paris right now because I leveled this up to the max, then I went and bought this, um, literally from here. I went to my arsenal and I started searching through these, and I looked for ones that didn't say platinum, I looked for ones that just had credits. So I bought the Strun because I was able to buy that with credits, um, and then I, ma I, I maxed that out. Then I bought a Paris, I was able to get that immediately, so now I'm working on maxing that out. Um, but basically this is what you want to do, you want to go and max everything out in the game. Just give every weapon a try. The biggest piece of advice I can give to you is that do not judge a weapon until you've gotten it to 30. While you're in the process of leveling that weapon, it's not going to be playing to its par. And I don't even mean it's potential. You adding mods to everything, Warframes and weapons, that exceeds its part, brings it to its potential. But don't judge a weapon or a Warframe until you've got it at rank 30. Once it's at rank 30, then give it a try. Like then honestly try to learn it, see how you like it. Um, because if you're trying to like use a, uh, see if you like a Warframe before it hits 30, it hasn't, you haven't unlocked its you know, like, you're not at par. You haven't unlocked all of its abilities yet. Okay, let's go to Excalibur, right? I'm gonna go to his abilities. So, his abilities right here, as you start leveling Excalibur up, um, these, you're gonna start unlocking these. But, as you continue to level him up, these will keep leveling up. And the finally, they will finish, this last one will not finish being at its potential 
until you've hit rank 30. So that's why I tell you guys, don't judge a Warframe until you get it to 30. Because all of the abilities that you have that you can kind of test out, that's all that's really happening. You're just testing them out until the Warframe actually gets to 30, and then you can actually see what they're like. And then you're at par. Like, then you're just at normal playing field once that Warframe gets there. If you want to make it really strong and see what its potential is, then you throw a lot of mods on it. Then you, like, you know, you, you max out mods, you put them on the Warframe, and you try all that sort of stuff with the mods on there. Then you're then you're getting closer to seeing what its potential is like. So there are plenty of Warframes when I was playing this game that I was like, I don't really like this Warframe that much. I kind of don't really care. But as I got it to level 30 and I started putting mods on it, my opinion changed. And I was like, okay... Now I can see why this Warframe is really cool. This is a really, really awesome one. Um, so right now, what we're going to work on is the Venus Junction. This is what we're going to do. And actually for this, now that I think about it, I actually don't want to be here. Um, I want to go back to my arsenal because I want to put a different weapon on for what we're about to do. Especially since what we're doing here at this junction is we're going to we're gonna go into a battle. And we're going to wind up battling a Spectre um, Warframe. And we're gonna have to kill them in order to be able to progress through the solar rail. So what the hell equips? There we go. I'm gonna double click that on. I'm just gonna upgrade it and take a look what I have. So here's a serration that is at this this one is at rank four, but this is only 75% damage. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. We have a stabilizer on here for weapon recoil. It's not that big of a deal, but this is split chamber is a multi-shot. Take a look at my stats right now, and then watch what happens when I put this on here. They all get like increased. So, and this is just a plain mod. I don't have this maxed out. It is not at rank 5 that it could be at. Um, this is just where it is right now. So, keep that in mind. Um, oh yeah, and like I was saying before, these cracked mods and stuff like that, now that we have the regular version of them, we can throw these out. Like, we can get rid of them. So let me show you um, really quick how to get rid of a cracked mod the best way that you can. So, you're basically going to go to all mods right here. We're going to find a cracked one. Um, let's see, a cracked one that I already have. Let's find stretch. Yeah, and I have stretch over here. So we'll take this crack stretch right here, and we're gonna do, um, we can either sell your mods for credits, or we could do dissolve into endo. I would recommend 100% of the time you never turn them into credits. Credits are too easy to get in this game once you know what you're doing. Once you have, if you, if you have a team of people, they're even easier than too easy to get. Um, because you can do raids, you can have people carry you through different things. It's, credits are just the easiest thing in the world to get. Endo is a pain. It's it's and endo is not a fun thing to go farming for. So what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll turn it into endo. And then it says, "Are you sure you want to dissolve stretch for ten endo?" Yes, yes, I definitely do. Um, and then increased our endo a little bit, which is awesome. But uh, that's what you want to do with damaged mods. You want to take those and turn them into endo. Now, a thing I've noticed, just so you guys can keep this in mind, is that all the damaged mods that we got um, as we were playing through the beginning of this game. They're all actually necessary mods, um, like Intensify, Streamline, Continuity, the Stretch that we had. Those are good bearings for you guys to look for the original versions of those mods, because, like I said, like these mods, these damaged mods that they gave us, these are actually important mods. There are thousands of mods in this game, and it's a lot of times you're like, I'll never use this, and that's probably true. Majority of the mods in this game you probably won't use, but... The ones that they give us that are damaged in the very beginning, definitely keep an eye out for the regular versions of these. You guys definitely, definitely want them. So um, that's just kind of a good thing. Like we got a Vitality, we got a Vitality. We definitely want that stuff. Um, so all right, all that being said, let's uh, let's let's take this a step further right now. Um, is there anything else that we want to put on here for what we're about to do? We got Fire Rate. Two times for bows. So fire rate's not bad because if you can hit things with uh if you can hit things faster, like if you hit something with more bullets in a shorter amount of time, you're obviously gonna kill it in a shorter amount of time. So a speed thing is not bad for where we're at right now. This I have weapon recoil on, which um I don't even know if this weapon really has bad recoil, but it's gonna kind of smooth it out so the the gun doesn't like jump up as you shoot it. Um and honestly, if there's anything that I'd want to level up, it'd be serration more and even split chamber. These two are a big deal. So, but just for now, I'm going to leave it as is. You guys might even have those mods for what we're going to do. But honestly, what we're going to do, I could probably do it without any mods. It would just might take a little bit longer. It's not the hardest thing in the world to do to beat the, uh, the early junctions. Um, but as long as you guys are leveling your mods up as you're playing through the game, it's going to make it easier for you. It's going to make it like I showed you in the, um, a second ago with the Master Rank 2. 
it's going to make it so that it's really not that much of a struggle for you to beat whatever it is you're trying to beat. So here we are at the Venus Junction. These are always so cool. So you guys see this over here? These are the rewards we're going to get for beating this. And since everything here is checked, it's going to let us do this. Um, so let's get uh, let's get this started. Okay. So this is who we want to fight. I'm going to blind him, and I'm going to shoot him. This is actually pretty quick. And that really wasn't difficult at all. This is the Rhino Warframe. You guys will get a hold of him. He's actually a great Warframe. Um, or maybe I should say he was a great Warframe. Let's have a moment of silence for our dear friend, Rhino. Alright, or not. Okay, so anyway. That's basically it. That's the junction. And the only reason that seems so easy is because... Not because I'm good at Warframe. I just ran up there, stood there, and shot him in the head. Like, that was it. The reason why it, it, was, it was so easy was because the mods... Like, you could be the worst video game player in the world... But if your mods are maxed, or if you have a lot of, like, really good mods on your weapons, you know how to build your stuff, you're set. Like, you're totally good. You can just casually play this, um, as much as you want. So, another cool thing about this, which we definitely want to do right away, um, we literally just got ourselves a companion right here. This is the, uh, the Taxon, uh, or a blueprint for the Taxon, which is a Sentinel. So, I want to get this, um, one, to level it up for Master Rank, two, because... All Sentinels now have a, uh, like, a pickup ability, where if you're near an item on the ground, it just gets vacuumed up into that, uh, uh, into that Sentinel. And these are very important. You guys, you can max these if you want. These will definitely be using even into late game. These are great for status, for weapons with status. These are, uh, uh, these are elemental mods. You have cold and electricity. And then we got a blueprint out of here, which, um, I knew we were gonna get this, so I didn't bother buying it from the market. Um, but... Let's get out of here for a second. Oh yeah, and now we have unlocked Venus. And we can start messing around on Venus, which as you guys can see, it says the faction is Corpus. This is a completely different now enemy set and stuff. And uh, we can get into that in a second or in the next video. But I'm going to show you guys what I actually want to do at this exact moment now. Um, what I want to do... Oh yeah, and I also started building some other weapons too, because I was able to get, you know, just from farming Hyrocon and stuff like that, I was able to uh, get resources to build this stuff. So the Grokata's got 14 minutes left. Um, still don't know how to pronounce this, but that's all ready to go, so I'll just claim this. And now I can equip this and I can start leveling that up. But here we have the Furious right here. Uh, looks like I have all the resources I need for it, so I'm just going to start building it. Um, then what else? Is there anything else for you to go? It doesn't look like it. But, uh, yeah, this was a daily login reward. I'm gonna enjoy using that. And this, we did a alert. I was actually carried yesterday on an alert, so we got an extra or uh, Oroken reactor out of doing an alert mission that I wasn't able to see because, um, I guess I wasn't a certain mastery rank level or I'm not further enough in, far enough into the game, but <coughs> the people that I was playing with were able to see it, so they wound up taking me on this mission, uh, to be able to do that. Oh, yes. The Taxion, I think we started building, that's great. And uh, now we're going to take a look at what is the next step? What can we do? Well, we can do a numerous amount of things. We could actually go do the Mars Junction, but we can't. Actually, look at that. The first thing we have to do is complete the quest once a week. So now we want to go find the quest once a week. That's now the new thing we want to do. And the other prize, you guys just saw it a second ago, it said the Void Relic segment. So we'll get that from completing the Mars Junction. We can get into relics and all that sort of stuff in that video. Um, but for now, let's, uh, let's go over to Venus and see what we might have to be doing here and stuff. So this is an exterminate for Corpus, and, um, this isn't really anything that is super special. There's nothing magic about this mission. It's really just an exterminate mission, and I'm going to be fighting the Corpus faction, which is really just, um, you know, like, you guys can see the little picture of him to the left of the word E-Gate on that, you know, on the banner picture there. But that's, you know, like, the Corpus look, and, uh, yeah, basically... I would say you guys could just feel free to go do this. It's an exterminate. You're just killing everything. That's all it really is. Um, and uh, as far as, you know, like building for the Corpus faction and stuff like that, it's still too early in the game right now, and I don't have enough stuff to really use as an example, and it doesn't matter right now. So we'll get to that 
I'll wind up showing you guys how to build corpus and all that sort of stuff. But for now, you guys are awesome. I know you got a lot of stuff out of this video because I was just really excited to get all this stuff out and let you guys know what had been happening and stuff. Um, but really, you guys, just grind the game out, grind the game out, grind the game out. Keep leveling yourself up, get a lot of endo, get a lot of credits, so you can make your mods stronger and stuff. And that's where we're at right now. That's what the goal is right now in the game. Um, it's going to slowly progress into other things and other avenues that you guys can take and play. But just so, for leveling up sake and so you guys get the point and you get, you know, a lot of stuff done faster, all you're looking to do is just level yourself up right now. Beat as many missions as you possibly can. And uh, I will be back with the next episode of... Uh, of, you know, like the walkthrough of Warframe where you guys can find out what it is that you next want to do in the game and uh, there'll be a lot more advice and stuff along those lines, uh, you know, just so you guys can learn more about the game, become like the ultimate godly Warframe that we all know everybody wants to be. So, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are absolutely amazing. I love your faces and I will see you guys in the next episode.